Romper, bumper, stomper, boo. Tell me, tell me, tell me, do. Magic mirror, tell me today. Are my friends ready for fun and play? Good to see everybody. Welcome to Midwood, Brooklyn. And the history is all around us. Good to see you, Guy Heyman. Driving the roads of America, or taking off from the roads of America. Good to see you. Hopefully you're enjoying your time off. But we, I'm above what used to be. This, this would have been the Brooklyn branch to the, to the LIRR. Buenvenue! Good to see you, Nabool. This would have been... Now, they tried... This would have been a highway if Robert Moses would have gotten his way. You are awesome. If Robert Moses would have gotten his way, there would have been a highway right here. That's right, right account. You're with the red. I figured that was you. We had a similar sounding name. But good to see you. We're deep in Brooklyn. We are so deep in Brooklyn it hurts. We're in Midwood. And uh, I came across, I had to show, I had to start off with this substation here. This is the original substation for the train line that's here, the Q train. Good to see you, Susie folk. So this is the substation right here for the subway. The subway is a couple of feet over you might, might be able to hear it in the background right now but we are gonna i am going to tie so many different things together good to see you griff i'm gonna tie banksky with the best pizza in the world with the birth of television and movies and more importantly color tv so we're gonna try to merge all of that together in one video and hopefully bang it out in an hour but good to see everybody. Good to see you, Debbie. Oh, it's cold out here. <laughs> it is cold. I'm going to have to whip out my gloves. But we're going to now walk to Avenue I. And we're going to go to Avenue I. And good to see you, Amy. Going to Avenue I and, Co and Coney Island Avenue. And it was confirmed that Banksy did this wall. And uh, he put it on his Twitter. It's been up for a while now, so hopefully it's not completely destroyed. Well, that's what we're going to first. We're going to see, hopefully, Banksy's new piece. When we saw the clock, the clock that was on, uh, the clock that was on um, 14th Street, uh, it already has been removed. <laughs> the clock on 14th Street has been removed. So, I'm so happy we got to see that on my YouTube channel. Yes, it was removed a few hours ago. I actually had a friend who kind of made a, made a pilgrimage to go see it. And then he texts me, look, it's gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so happy we got to see it. Here we are, Avenue I. We are on Avenue I here in deep in Brooklyn. In Midwood, Brooklyn, yeah? Well, if you want to see it, go to my YouTube channel. I mean, go to my previous videos so you can see it. Good to see you, Ed. We actually saw Bank, both of Banksy's pieces on that video. Did a little walking tour. But this is deep in, in Jewish Brooklyn right here. We're deep in Jewish Brooklyn right now. And we're going to see a bunch of stuff right now. You're going to be kind of amazed how much stuff we're going to see right now. Picture is a little blurry. Uh, okay. You started on my video. Awesome. A few blocks away from Brooklyn College. That's right, Carl. How's this? Wait, it's blurry for everyone? It's, is it blurry for everybody? Let me know if it's blurry for everyone. So I'm pretty sure I cleaned my lands. I cleaned my lands. Awesome. Thanks for watching my YouTube, Amy. We're going to go. We're going to go down this block in a, in a little bit. Good here. Okay, awesome. Good to see you, Norm. We're going to go down this block in a, in, in a little bit. Also, is there something really cool down this block right here? But let's make our way over to, over to Coney Island Avenue right now, which is two blocks over. Yeah, and we're not that far from Brooklyn College. <laughs> it's all that snow. It looks fine. That's right. Good to see you, Jim. Good to see you. And feel free, Jim, when we get to uh, the NBC Color Studio, feel free to throw out TV shows. Because <laughs> we're going to go somewhere very historical. Must have been the focus, okay? This doesn't really focus here on the YouTube. It just does it automatically. 
Ah, congratulations on your new Android. I went from the hustle and the bustle of lower Manhattan to the quiet, to the quiet, almost suburban-like. Ah, oh, okay, <laughs> buried in spreadsheets. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yes, it, uh, Behringer, yeah, it's very sad what's going on. You'll be there at noon tomorrow? Okay. I might have to join the polar bears tomorrow. And it's looking like we're going to get a good snow. This is a house alarm, by the way. That's a house alarm, that freaking loud. That is a freaking house alarm. Boy, that was loud. This is kind of like Jewish Brooklyn from here. Right? It sounded like a cop car, right? I think it was loud. This is like Jewish Brooklyn. And uh, right here in the corner, we're already up to it. Yeah, the mailman set it off, yeah. Actually, when I was setting up the broadcast, a mailman was fighting with uh, somebody in their house. Need one for your house. You used to take the train to Avenue H. Sophie's Choice was, yes, Sophie's Choice was filmed in this area. That is, I always forget about that, correct. Yeah, we're not that far from Brooklyn, Brooklyn College. About maybe a 10 minute walk to Brooklyn College from here. So now we're on Avenue I, Coney Island Avenue. Here it is. There is an abandoned gas station right here. Let's see if they destroyed the Bankski. Let's see if they destroyed the Bankski. And there's actually two pieces. There are two pieces here. So let's see. Wow, this is really dystopian. This little. So I know there's one right here. Let's see here. Oh, look at it. I like it. We got the, the seal. And then, okay, good. They haven't destroyed it, but people have added to it. So here's the first piece. But then as we turn, here's the one that's making all the attention. Here's the one that's getting all the attention. And luckily, they, did, they didn't destroy it. I'm happy they didn't destroy it. But he confirmed on his Twitter a couple days ago that this is his. Here it is. I like it. I like it. And people have put other stuff here. Take a screenshot, tweet it at me, and I'll retweet you. I'm surprised it hasn't been destroyed. I'm so happy it hasn't been destroyed. All right, you love it? You like it? Make sure nobody else is. Everyone's taking, there are people taking pictures of it. Let all that you do be done in love. Yes, I have to agree. Let's get a close up look at this piece here. Let's get up close and personal here. It's a totally Banksy. This is totally Banksy. It has a style. The Che Guevara has been added very recently. That paint looks very fresh. But at least, at least everyone who's tagging it up is respecting it. At least they're respecting it. But there it is. Banksy's triumphant return to Brooklyn. His wall that he did in Coney Island a couple of years ago. Still up, but it's behind a roll gate. And uh, I got to talk to, I gotta talk to uh, Community Board 13, uh, Jim. I got to try to get that roll gate lifted for my, for my YouTube audience. <laughs> but there it is. That's a, it's wild. Definitely, definitely has Banksy's uh, flavor, flavor to it there. A little bit of his flavor. I like it. I can dig it. I can dig it. I know who I know. I know who to ask. I know exactly who to ask. So I'll be asking him next time I see him on the weekend, Saturday, 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 Saturday. You retweet. Awesome. Yes, please take a screenshot. Take a screenshot so I can put this on my YouTube. I mean, on my on my Instagram. But there it is, right here, Avenue I. This is like a real dystopian gas station. Look at this, like it's just all, this mobile station, just all abandoned here in the middle of Brooklyn. <laughs> he certainly picked like the most dismal spot 
to do this piece. Uh, he might swim tomorrow. Okay, awesome, awesome. He will be there Sunday, awesome. He picked like the most, this is really, really, really kind of crazy how it's just right here. Makes me proud to live in Brooklyn when you have stuff like this. Exactly, he's the founder of, this, this, this kind of reminded me of Dismaland. Because you have all the pavement, it's all like upturned and you know, there's no more, there's no more uh, gas pumps here anymore. Good afternoon, Boozy Burger Bell. Since Boozy's tuning in from the UK, I just show him, I'll show him his UK brethren here. Banksy's, here's Banksy's wall right here in the middle of Brooklyn, Midwood, Brooklyn to be exact. We'll get one last look at it. Yeah, you got a meeting, nice. It does look like a Mad Max set, right, Cody? Good to see you. It looks like, totally looks like a Mad Max set. He picks like the one gas station that looks like completely crazy. I'll see you later, Amy, have a great day. But there you have it. It's confirmed. Now this wall went up about a week ago, maybe longer than that. And people weren't sure if it was his or not. He didn't tweet it out or, I mean, he didn't, he didn't put it on his Instagram. And then he, two days ago, he put it on his Instagram. Thanks for the super chat, Amy. Thanks for the super chat. There it is. Now, we're here in the middle of Midwood. Little do people know, a lot of interesting stuff has happened right here in Midwood. So much interesting stuff. Three blocks away from where we are right now. Three blocks away. The good old Robert the, the Naha. That's right. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much, Amy. So, right here in the middle of it all, here in, here in um, Midwood, we are three blocks away from Woody Allen's childhood home. So that's where we're gonna go to next. We're gonna go to, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you Woody Allen's home. So let's say goodbye to the Banksy. Hopefully it lasts for another month or two. I know they gotta tear this up and put condos here. And we'll say goodbye to the seal. The piece is kind of getting overlooked is the seal. Something tells me he's staying out here in this neighborhood. I don't know. Something tells me he's staying out here. You never know. Now. Let's go see Woody Allen's house, shall we? Let's walk back up towards West 14th Street. Or, sorry, East 14th Street. And I'm going to show you where Woody Allen was born. Love him or hate him, he does have a lot of movies underneath his, under his belt, if you will. <laughs> pardon, pardon my wording. <laughs> Ooh. Damn, you certainly came up fast. See you later, Amy. Have a great day. Yeah, no, you know, no need to see Wonder Wheel. No need to see Wonder Wheel. This guy wants to get on camera. We have our first person who wants to get on camera. Yay! And they're in a car. I love it when they want to get on camera and they're in a car. <laughs> so now we're gonna walk over to East 14th Street, and I'm gonna show you Woody Allen's childhood home. Let's say hello to Woody Allen's house. And I, and I always wonder if the people who actually live in the house know that Woody Allen was born in that house. Yeah, exactly. Spoiler alert, ain't worth it. Exactly. And yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Do me a favor. If you actually like what you're watching, give me a thumbs up. Do me a favor. I'd be greatly appreciated. For every thumbs up, and that was not planned, <laughs> for every thumbs up here on YouTube, 10,000 Periscope parts, it's a completely arbitrary number I made up. Two blocks away from... Uh, from the Kent Theater, correct. I saw that on the map. The Kent Theater. Good to see you go for hockey. I've never been to the Kent Theater, so it's pretty cool. A lot of like interesting history around here. So supposedly, going by Woody Allen's documentary, he lived in five different homes around here. All roughly on the same blocks. East 14th Street, East 15th Street. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. I appreciate it. I'm totally ready for, most, for more snow. Oh, we're not even remotely done yet, Norm. Wait until where we end, where we end this little walking tour is gonna be amazing. Where we end this is gonna be really amazing. 
No, Banksy's not on Twitter. He's on Instagram. He is on Instagram. So it wasn't confirmed. I'll flip the camera around. I'll flip the camera around since we're in front of a, a school here. But basically what happened was he did the piece about a week ago, or a little more than a week ago, and people were like, is it Banksy? Is it not? So what happened was uh, he posted it on his Instagram uh, the other day, like two days ago. And it's his. He has taken, he has taken credit for it. And people just said it kind of just appeared there one night. Like always does his works, you know? But now as I turn on to West, or sorry, East, I keep calling it West, East 14th Street, this is the block Woody Allen, Woody Allen grows up on as a child. There's a great little documentary called Woody, and he actually comes out here to this house that I'm about to show you right now. So let's see the Chinese family who owns it is in front too. <laughs> I'm going to be the crazy guy looking at their house again. Whenever I, uh, <laughs> whenever I leave, whenever I lead group rides to the beach, we come down this street right here and I always let everybody know this is Woody Allen's house. So <laughs> exactly Robert from Massive Attack. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great boozy? One could dream, right? Oh, Midwood boy. <laughs> Midwood. Everyone drives like a maniac down here in Midwood. So as we walk down, so look at that, just three blocks away from where Banksy did his piece. You're now in the neighborhood where Woody Allen grew up. And the house we're gonna see, this is the house he was born in. He always makes it a point to say that. And his parents owned a theater right around the corner here on Avenue J. And the building is still there, but today is like a, like a, um, was it like, like a eyeglass store or something like that, ophthalmologist. But here it is, this little house, this little house, the last house before the big apartment building. This is it. The history is all around us, folks. <laughs> no, wonder if his birthplace guarantees a, no, no. A regular family, a Chinese family lives in here, but this is it. Here it is, it's where Woody Allen grew up as a kid. As he says, he was born in this house. Let's get across the street here. So we get a proper, a proper look at it. Good to see you, Dave. You're looking at Woody Allen's childhood house right here. Woody Allen's childhood home, right here in, in the middle of in the middle of Brooklyn. And now it's pretty old. Uh, I, I, I would say this house was built in the 19 teens, like 19 like 1915, something like that. But now, as we turn on to to Avenue J, a place very historic for me and my wife, because we both love pizza. And the best pizza, as the New York Times said it, the best pizza in the country, if not the world, is right around the corner from Woody Allen's childhood home. We're actually, and we're also, just on a side note, we're 10 blocks away from where, Ber um, where Ber Bernie Sanders grew up. So we're not that far from where he grew up himself. We're about maybe, maybe about six blocks away from where he uh, grew up. But we, all we gotta do is walk right around the corner here and look. Ooh, it's, they got somebody's cooking nuts around here. That's not the nuts smell good. Literally. He did have a good town hall on YouTube last night. I saw a little bit of that. I really wish he was president. <laughs> I really wish he was president. Uh, it's calm. It's cold though, Dave. It's pretty cold. So right here, across the street, 52 years ago, Defara, his name is Dom DeMarco. He was the man, he is the man that everyone freaks out about. 
and they're open. I love the fact Oh, it's very homey out here. Yeah, it's, it's nice and chill. It's a working class neighborhood, you know? It's a working class neighborhood. But just look at this sign here. They really don't make the signs like this anymore. There it is. Zafara. Zafara Pizza right there. Only Dom, Dom DeMarco makes pizza. And Zafara is like a half, like a half read between his lawyer's name and his and his uh and his own last name oh it does smell amazing it does smell oh somebody's vlogging somebody's in there with a vlogging camera somebody's vlogging somebody's vlogging right now <laughs> here at Defar. hopefully he went to go see banksy's piece let's see if we can see dom making the pizzas this is where me and my wife uh really 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 got together i mean i know it does look shockingly empty is it shockingly empty oh my god it is there he is he's, there's the old man himself making the pizza he's making it he's making it i should i should have not eat, eaten anything and got and just got some pizza i know he hopes maybe he's a youtube vlogger oh yeah it is empty in there holy crap I should have, I should have not eaten anything and uh, and got some pizza. Hello, Jason. Good to see you. All right. So now we saw the pizza. We saw the pizza. Now, oh, actually, no. We let's walk down. Let's walk down 15. Let's walk down 15. Because now what we're gonna go to next is uh, is the birth of color television. I like to always imagine a young Woody Allen walking down to the old Vitagraph lot here and uh, and see where the movies were made. So like 1906 Vitagraph Studios opens up and uh, they have a lot of silent films there, not the Vitagex lot, no. And basically they're one of the first movie studios in the United States. Now, fast forward to 1923, Warner Brothers buys the lot, even though Vitagraph still produces films, Warner Brothers buys the lot, turns it into a soundstage, and uh, then Warner Brothers owns it until the mid-1950s. 1953, I believe, NBC buys... The old Vitagraph lot. Well, they, they buy one of the, they buy the part of the Warner Brothers part. The Vitagraph Studios, their very world famous glass enclosed studio that was built in 1906, that becomes something else. Today is a school, a, a girls' school. And I'm happy to see the Vitagraph smokestack still standing today. Now, it's kind of funny. When Warner Brothers opens up their, their sound stage, this subway comes <laughs> very soon after. The subway was already there, but train traffic got more regular. But NBC took an opportunity. And when you hear the names of all the stars that have performed here, it's, a, it's really amazing. And it's kind of sad that none of this history re is really preserved but let's take a look at the neighborhood in the neighborhood in the neighborhood da, 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 da. yeah yeah as you see this is like the middle of brooklyn nothing special so we're in, we're, in, we're in a neighborhood called midwood this is called midwood we're coming up probably the most well-known high school right next to the Vitagraph Studios is here. It's called Edward R. Murrow High School. The TV Communications High School. I'm trying to preserve it, Dave. Hopefully, hopefully it'll, it'll outlive all of us here on the YouTube as we approach Avenue K. Ooh, that was... And, look, and then he drives fast, too. 
He almost hits the kid and then he drives fast. <laughs> you gotta love these people. You gotta love them. Yeah, in this neighborhood, it's like they drive, she's right up on them. They drive very aggressively in this neighborhood for like no reason. For like no reason at all. These are like lovely, like dead end streets. Sometimes it gives the kids a false sense of security. Look at these great houses here. Yeah, I know, or the way you just hit the gas, it's pretty funny. That's why driving here in New York is not fun. All right, isn't it great? The architecture here is lovely. Good to see you, Alistair Bruce. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> little, <laughs> a little custom work there on his car. At the end of the road is, you can see, uh, that's the high school. That's, that's a Murrow. Or is that the Vitagraph building? That might be the Vitagraph building, actually. Or what used to be the Vitagraph building. No, camp? No, to do some detailing like that? No. That cannot be cheap. See the train? Right here in these people's backyards. <laughs> All right, don't you love this area? I love this neighborhood. This is where my, my wife, ugh, this is where my wife used to live. When we first met, she, she lived right around here. And, uh, uh, the, no, actually, no, they're brick. They're brick. I don't think we have too many wooden homes around here. Everything was built in like 1900, 19 teens. Like around, think around then, this neighborhood was developed. Yeah, exactly, better area in Bay Ridge, I know. Now my wife likes to run, so. She's able to go down to the waterfront and run. That's her, uh, her therapy, as she calls it. Around here, you could run, but there's, you know, you got to watch out for cars and you're in the street. I like to think about when they filmed those movies in Vitagraph, they would use these streets here before they were developed. And uh, like you had Rudolph Valentino and Ben-Hur, the silent film of Ben-Hur was filmed right here on these streets. Wow. Okay, so all, pretty much all that's left is the Vitagraph smokestack. At least that's still up. This is where the neighborhood gets weird because what happened was the development of this neighborhood went around the movie and then later on TV studios. And there's a great video that I'm going to reference later on that I'm going to probably link in the description of this video on my way home. And I'm going to show you where Don Rickles filmed the scene for the Craft Music Hall. And I'm going to actually play out the scenes for us. But now we're making our way down to the Vitagraph slash Warner Brothers slash NBC Studios. The Vitagraph smokestack right there, built in 1906. The only thing left over from Vitagraph, unfortunately. And they're trying to get that smokestack landmarked. No, we're not looking at you. We're not looking at you. The white, these two people are waving to me thinking we're looking at them. We're not looking at them. But anyway, 1906, the Vitagraph smokestack was built with the rest of Vitagraph Studios. Oh boy. Now I'm, I'm going to... When he wants to cut across the red light here. No, sorry, buddy. Anyway, two people in a car waving at you. You didn't see that guy. Sorry. Sorry. When people decide to just wave. They do. Yeah, no, there was a big group of preservationists to keep this smokestack alive. So luckily we still have the smokestack. But in front of us, that whole, that whole new building, that, that would have been where the glass studio for Vitagraph would have been. Yeah, well, watch when we, when we round the corner here, you're gonna see a lot more little hints of what used to be here. A 
I believe this is called Locust Avenue. <laughs> and you see, they get a dead end in front of a car. It's, anyway. Oh, this is Flatbush. You're welcome, You hear this? Oh, great. I got the kids on me now. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you hear them? You hear them, folks? All right. Here's a photograph smokestack. We're on Locust Avenue now. 15th Street. The only thing left from the Vitagraph now. Look at this monstrosity they're building here. So here, wow, this thing is a, really a monstrosity. This is what they're building here. At least we got to keep the Vitagraph smokestack though. And it was a lot taller than that. They actually did take it down a little bit here. And then here, here, right, Carl, you remember this. This is where the big white building was. This is where the big Vitagraph glass studio used to be. So that's completely gone now. That's kind of sad, but it, it did kind of look like a studio. So. And the kid said, this is Flatbush. This is Midwood, folks. This is Midwood. Yep, compartments make everything better. And now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk back to 14th Street. And I'm gonna show you the studios, the NBC Studio One. This was the original studio that that Warner Brothers built, the soundstage that they built. And it's gone. It really is gone. They really did take it all down. Wow. All right, we're gonna have to use, this is like a Coney Island tour. We're gonna have to use our imaginations now because it's completely gone. I'm kind of sad now. I am complete, I'm very sad now. So on this corner closest to us, this was the NBC Studio One. And in this building or what, in this location, they filmed the Nat King Cole show and then um, many other TV shows, some experimental. They, they, they filmed some experimental yeah, we gotta use imagination, folks. Yes, Cosby Show was next door, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Because there were two studios. This is, this is studio number one, and studio number two is on the corner there. That's still there. Studio number two has a crazy history, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But some of the first experimental color, color broadcasts were right here in studio one. But in 1956, uh, NBC went all in on NBC decided to go all in on color broadcasts. So they built right next door, they built here what was called NBC Studio 2 or the Color Studio 2 for eight months. This was the world's largest color television studio in the United States. It wasn't until eight months later, Burbank built a larger soundstage. But in this studio, the first season of The Cosby Show was filmed here as the entire 35 year run of As the World Turns came out of this building here. The Kraft Music Hall, The Color Hullabaloo, um, The Johnny Cash Show. Uh, what else? There's more, I'm missing. Right, the Ethel, Ethel Merman Aqua Spectaculars were filmed here. And what they did was when they first built this studio, when they first built this building and the studio here, they actually built a very large swimming pool. So half of the broadcast, the dry studio was in Studio One, and then the pool was in Studio Two, which is this building right here. And let me get across the street here. But they filmed these Aqua Spectaculars. They were live on the NBC network. He is just flying down the street here. <laughs> uh, now, like I said, at the time, it was the world's largest color television studio. And I was reading something like they were waiting to build this building because they were waiting to see what was gonna be the television standard. And, and, and the standard ended up being NTSC. But this is it. The entire, I mean, so many TV shows. I, mean, I know I'm missing out on half of the TV shows that were filmed here. There were so many TV shows filmed here, but like you name them, they performed here. Elvis performed here, uh, John, of course, Johnny Cash, um, 
Oh my God, uh, there's, there's, there, used, there used to be a great video with uh, what, the Beach Boys filming here. And they're like lip, lip syncing very bad. And, but I'm really sad about the color, about the number one studio there. So at least we still got number two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to recreate, we're going to create a scene, right? The first color television broadcast, uh, what, in Wimbledon? No, we were doing color, tele the earliest tele color television broadcast that came out of this building was in 1956. 19, and they were, exper some, of these, some of them were experimental. When NBC first acquired Studio One, this was, this was the Warner Brothers lot. They, um, they whatchamacallit, they, uh, they did experimental broadcasts in there for people, for, for the DuPont company, I know. So like, they had like, a closed circuit where they did a broadcast and the people, only the people in, only the people in New Jersey got to watch it in true color. Now we, what we're having, what we have here is a lady who's not supposed to be parked here and everyone's trying to get around her. And she's, just, she's just gonna, she's just gonna, she's just gonna sit in the car. All right, so now let's recreate. We're gonna recreate a, a, an old film from 1968. Don Rickles is on the Kraft Music Hall. Exactly, here's your horns, people. Sing, sing it, people. So a, a lot of this stuff is actually, when you watch the film or the video, it, a lot of it's still the same. Lots of history norms. So we have this, let me, let's start out with the balcony here. So there's a balcony, there's a balcony right up here. Now, if you can remember, if you remember, if you know, like the old TV equipment, it was big, it was bulky, it was really, really heavy. So what they had, was they had a camera perched on top of there, on top of there, and then Don Rickles was on the subway platform right there at Avenue M. Now, mind you, there was no wireless microphone, so Don Rickles is hooked up to a wired microphone as he's walking down the platform here. But it opens with Don Rickles. Yep, you remember the Craft Music Hall? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link, I'm gonna link a film to uh, our video, a, a little clip from, from, what I'm, from what I'm explaining right now. But now Don Rickles starts out up there, in the, uh, up there in the subway station, and then he exits the subway station right across the street here. Now, where I'm standing would have been where the camera was, because, right, you remember, you saw that? Now, I'm standing way back over here, and he got out of the subway way across the street over there. Remember, the cameras were not wireless, so they ran a cable all the way down the block here, and then they used a really long zoom lens, probably the same zoom lens that they used on the building, but now they're at street level. The camera was on a dolly, like wheels, so they were tracking the shot. But basically he comes up, and I wish the cars weren't here, but he comes straight up through here, he passes those storefronts over there, then cuts across the street, a guy steals his watch. A guy steals Don Rickles' watch right here on this little, on this little corner here. You know why his traffic's all getting all nuts? Because the school just let out. This is like madness with the cars. So, the camera way across the street over there. Don Rickles hops out of the subway right here. And then as he's walking across right here, he gets his watch stolen right here. And he goes, yeah, they always, they always take the time. I think about Brooklyn. They always take the time to all the horns. So now he continues to walk up and he walks right across the street here. And now this is, this is really fun because it's still a bank. I'm going to give you the perspective. At one point, Don Rickles gets a hot dog. So he gets the hot dog from in front of the bank. Jesus Christ. He gets a hot dog from the bank and then he walks up the sidewalk here. But there's still a bank today, which is amazing. It was a bank back then and it's still a bank today. So now we're gonna go exactly where he ate that hot dog because you know how I know is he ate the hot dog there. Here's the Johnny pump. This is in the shot. So the camera is right here now. So now Don Rickles is walking up. There's a kid sitting on the floor here. He gives the kid half of his hot dog. 
<laughs> and then he continues to walk in this way. Correct. Avenue M. Correct. So he's right here. And also, as we keep on walking up this way, Don Rickles is saying, telling jokes out of a book. And he's throwing them all, all the paper jokes on the floor. And he's going, beauties, beauties. They're all beauties. And further up, so the kid is sitting back here. Don Rickles is still walking towards the, cam towards the camera here. And then a cop says, he gotta, he's going to fine him for littering. <laughs> so, and now we cut the video. And now we're going to go back over to Locust Avenue. Exactly. He's doing all this after he got his watch stolen. Correct. <laughs> so now he, we end up over here on this on this street right actually not this street we gotta go one street over but he's at a place he plays stickball with the kids he plays stickball with the kids and i know it's that street but it's a dead end street i can't believe how big this thing went up quick that's kind of sad it's no longer uh the old warner brothers building is no longer there now this woman is still there this woman parked her car people are having a problem getting around her parked car and she's still there. it's huge right right carl see carl's from the neighbor knows yeah he was pretty all right having it stolen but if you can imagine the camera was perched up there on that little balcony up there but the cameras back then were huge. They were not really easy to maneuver around. I know she really does. She's what, what she's doing is she is she even in the car anymore? They're having what's, hap what's happening is they're having a problem making the turn. Oh wow, she got into the car, then she got out of the car. Nice. Okay. All right, this is a wow. This is really ballsy. No parking anytime. You're getting homesick. It's, that's why I do these videos, Carl. So now let's, let me show you where Don Rickles was playing stickball. Let me show you where Don Rickles was playing stickball. And when I'm done with this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a link to the, to, to the clip from the Craft Music Hall uh, underneath this video here when we conclude here. Yeah, the school's letting out, so... School's letting out, so all the kids are out. I still can't get over this because the building really did look like a studio. The building really did look like a movie studio. They, re they got rid of the whole thing. There were people who were trying to get it landmarked and whatnot, but it's completely gone now. Wow. I mean, major TV history, movie history, all right here. right here to the street where we walked up looking down this way this shot in exactly Don Rickles is playing stickball with some kids right here kind of amazing right here Locust Avenue East 14th Street wow and there you have it we somehow merged pizza Brooklyn and Banksy all together. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. I'm, I, this is it. We're done. I, there you have it, folks. <laughs> 45 minutes. It's a nice walk. When I realized that Banksy's piece on Avenue I and uh, and uh, and Coney Island Avenue, I was like, all this history is right here. Good to see you, Lori. I wish I wish the old I wish the old building was still here but it was vacant for quite some time. And I know when the JC studio took it over, they were having a problem running it. So exactly, a little bit of something for everyone. Thanks for watching Debbie and Guy Heyman and Boozy Burger Bell and Lori and Carl and Norm and Dave. Ah, <sighs> this is so much fun. You're more than what Alistair Bruce, you're more than welcome. I just hung in for the ride, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. You guys keep me doing what I'm doing, but it was a lot of fun showing you guys this little bit of TV history, TV and movie, TV and movie history. But I'm going to go get an Instagram of uh, Bingsky's wall before I go home.
But have a fantastic New York day, whether you live here. I got you all the way home. Awesome. Have a fantastic New York day, whether you live here or not. Hug your loved ones. Cherish the moment. And good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. I'll see you later. Nibble bread, baby. All right, guys. <laughs> I'll see everyone later. Goodbye from Midwood. Look at these helms. Awesome. I'll see you later, guys. Have a good one, guys. Stay safe. Be warm. Be well. And I'll see you guys later, folks. Bye-bye.